Hi there, this is Matt Heffernan, and welcome back to my channel. This is uh, October 16th, 2020, and uh, if you look here at one of my uh, most popular videos, which is the Commander X16 Sprite Demos, the very first Commander X16 video that I have posted on my YouTube channel back on October 16th, 2019. So we're uh, hitting a big milestone here of uh, exactly one year that I've been posting uh, Commander X16 and just generally uh, retro tech content on my YouTube channel. Now, uh, if you haven't seen this, uh, well, here's, here's what it kind of looks like. It's just a, a basic program, literally written in basic, that put a uh, sprite on the screen. And you might recognize it, right? It didn't do anything other than that. It just lets you just put that sprite up and uh, slowly walk it around. And that was it. There's not a lot to it. And uh, the following day, I actually created a, uh, a, f a new version of that in which, if we'll go here, if we look here on my channel, which by the way, just hit 250 subscribers, a quarter of the way to a thousand, which is a big milestone with uh, YouTube. Here, uh, the very most famous video on my channel, <laughs> if you want to call it famous, would be the uh, version two of the sprite demo, which I call the Eatening, <laughs> where, where that little Pac-Man character will eat whatever text is on there. And as you can see, it's uh, it, it's the most famous, uh, the most uh, hits I've gotten, most views I've gotten of any video on my channel. And uh, that's been a it's been a year of doing that. So let's take a quick look here at that code. What I never did in that video was really explain how it worked. And uh, this code has changed a bit over time. It's now compatible with the latest version of Commander X X16. Uh, some stuff has changed in the way that sprites work, and so it did require a, a few updates uh, over the past year. But this uh, code currently works, and uh, you can even do a demo version on commanderx16.com right on the web if you uh, are so inclined to do that. But here, let's take a quick look here at this code. And oh, let me, let me make it a bit bigger here, make it a little easier to read. So uh, first things first, I set up a, a set of offsets that I can quickly write to frame registers to, uh, uh, to the sprite register to point to whichever frame I want to show at a given time. And I created five different frames, and here you can see I have this, uh, these three, uh, or these uh, rather uh, four member arrays for both a horizontal sequence and a vertical sequence. And I have uh, basically uh, the same uh, zero uh, based one is the the hole, which we can see right here. In fact, if I do a little find on seven, you can see here what these uh, what these look like. Now you can see here a little bit open, more open, and then these other versions where they are uh, opening towards the top. But of course, you can do uh, uh, flipping with sprites, so all, this code takes care of all that for you. The first thing I have to do is enable sprites on the system. So here at, at the register of uh, 9F29, where you set this bit, which is addressable by hex 40, that would be uh, bit 6 of, uh, of that, the, the uh, second most significant bit. So I just OR that to the current value by doing a peak, and there I've set that bit and effectively enabled sprites. And then I start uh, actually poking at the sprite attributes. And if we look here in the Vera documentation, you can see here these sprite attributes start with the address in VRAM, where the sprites are. You'll notice here that it's at uh, five bit boundaries. So the lower five bits of the address aren't part of the address uh, that you put into the sprite attributes. So you have to uh, place your sprites within VRAM accordingly. And then you have X and Y uh, values where you place them on the screen. 
and then here you have uh, the V and H flip bits, which are vertical and horizontal flipping, and then uh, the height and width of the sprite and which palette uses, and we're just using the default palette, palette, palette offset zero. And so for sprite height and sprite width, we want uh, 16 by 16, so we're putting ones in both of these. And we mess around with the, the flipping and the uh, X and Y uh, values. And we, of course, are, are, are flip, changing out the address. And you'll notice here in that this, uh, these arrays up here, what we're changing with these values is effectively what's going to be written to uh, this lower part of the address, because the upper part is never going to change. We don't have that many sprites in there. We don't have a big diversity of addresses, so we can just change these lower eight bits of the, of the address, and that's good enough for what we need to do. <clears throat> because, again, we have the lower five bits of the complete 16-bit address is not actually part of it, so those eight bits are a little more significant. But then the other uh, thing in the sprite attributes that we need to have uh, set is the mode, and that is the actual uh, graphics mode of the sprite. And uh, unlike uh, bitmaps or tiles, with sprites, you don't have uh, the ability to do uh, one bit per pixel or two bit per pixel. You have to do four or eight. And in this case, we're doing four because we're just making a, a 16 color pixel, even though we're only setting one color. And uh, that color is, uh, as we saw before, uh, color index seven, which is just yellow. So here we can see after we set all those values, like I had described before, you notice here I'm using uh, basing it on FC10. Uh, this was mostly just so I could have 0 through 7 on there. And I don't want to use sprite 0 because sprite 0 is the, uh, the mouse cursor. And if you had a uh, mouse attached, it would just mess it all up. So uh, I had uh, that. This is a, these are changes that happened to the X16 emulator. Uh, long since I started this, so uh, <laughs> this uh, this code was not exactly well thought out <laughs> based on the current state of things. So uh, just uh, over time, I've had to change what these addresses are, but to keep these uh, lower nibbles zero through seven makes it easier to to deal with. And but now it's uh, bank one and then FC one for the for the the most significant part of the address. And there we go. So now here we can see the big round one that gets poked at uh, E thousand in uh, VRAM, which is equivalent to uh, uh, just putting a zero here in the the lower part of the address, which we do here by default. And then here, the upper part of the address, we're always putting in seven because again, we're shifting it by five bits. And if you work out the, the shifting, then that uh, zero uh, E <laughs> zero, zero, zero uh, comes out to be seven once you get bits uh, 13 and higher. So that's it. Now let's uh, take a look here at uh, E080 hex is where I poke this frame which uh, I can get to by just, uh, again, shifting by five bits, and we can just change this FC10 uh, register to four to address this guy, and then so on uh, through the rest. We can see here's that bigger one at E100, and that's uh, at eight, and then you can see we go back to that this uh, less open one so that we're going all the way open and always uh, going through this uh, less open mouth <laughs> frame. And then the same thing with going up. We can see here, I am. Uh, this is the less open but vertical, and we go back and forth between that and then 
again the same closed but then fully open on the top here with 10 which is what this guy is all right let's get rid of this search because that looks a little weird so so here through all these uh, vpokes i am able to uh, populate vram with all of the sprite frames and then here i get into the actual control loop of the program and here i just do a, a git and this git if it's um, a blank string that it returns because i'm getting to a string variable then it will just go back to here 4000 and just sit here and uh, busy wait for you to actually put some sort of key code in and then here uh, it's checking here for the uh, arrow keys so these are the actual key codes that you would get here so uh, 5000 is the you can see here the subroutine down here and it nicely commented saying move right so you know that 29 is the uh, right cursor arrow and then 6000 is left so 157 is the left arrow 7000 is moving down so 17 is the down uh, arrow key and then 145 is the up arrow key and we go to 8000 and we can see here in each of these what i am doing is uh just doing a, a few little pokes in these uh in these uh, registers so here in the four and five what i'm doing is i'm taking the y value so i'm updating the y value and you notice here i have checks to make sure that i stay within that 640 by 480 space so that i don't actually call these if i'm at the edge of the screen and but if i have room to spare i'll go ahead and move that in that direction by modifying the x or y value appropriately and then uh, here you can see in each case i am uh, ending with ff so i can just get the single byte value and poke that the lower byte of uh, x and y uh, and then poke that into the uh, the lower byte of the x or y register as you can here you can see here uh, two or four is uh, the lower part of x or y and you see here two or four and then three and five are the uh, upper parts of uh, x and y but you'll notice here it's just those uh those two bits because that's all it really needs because you can't really move you only have 640 by 480 maximum resolution anyway so you you don't need more than 10 bits for x and y and so i go ahead and and do that uh and to get those two bits with 300 hex and then i divide it by 100 hex which is the effectively the same as uh, shifting to the to the right by eight bits and uh that's just it's not exactly uh efficient <laughs> to do that in basic but it works and it's fast enough because i'm not doing a whole lot of other stuff and then you can see here i'm setting this variable hz saying that yes i am horizontal when i'm moving left uh, by set horizontal to zero for moving uh, up or down and uh, that uh, horizontal part uh, will affect which of those uh, two frame uh, arrays that i'm going to reference down here because as you can see at the end of uh, each of these uh, subroutines i go into another subroutine 9000 where uh, here i just pull that next frame and then i get uh here i just do a basic uh, add mod uh type calculation to get the current frame index and if it is horizontal then i get the horizontal frame and but otherwise i get the vertical frame and then i go ahead and poke that uh, lower frame uh, lower byte of the frame address into that sprite attribute register and then i do a uh, calculation here to uh, make sure that i can uh, uh, poke into uh, 
the space where I am, uh, wherever that sprite is, whatever uh, character it is over, that I can replace that character with a space right here in VRM. So that's what CP gets me is the actual that that character's uh, address, which is uh, pretty cool. So I can do a a nice 16-bit uh, address calculation here with basic and then I return back to wherever I was in uh, one of these four uh, subroutines and then I uh, go ahead and change that 6 which is the V flip or H flip I want to make sure that I have uh, got the correct flipping going on so if I'm moving right I don't want any sort of flipping. If I'm moving left, I want horizontal flipping. So I write a D. I want I write an E to do a vertical flipping. And then again here from scrolling up, I don't want flipping in that case either. So you'll you'll notice that it uh, it definitely <laughs> works out pretty well. And uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's what I, you know, that I'm of course yeah Z depth. I'm always at three. That's why C is the uh, is the default. So there's no flipping when I have C there. So these both of these bits here, bit three and two are set, and bit one and zero are uh, are not set. And that's why you'll also see me just do D and E. I'll never do F because I have no reason with any of these frames to flip it both ways. And then that's it. Uh, once these uh, subroutines return, they go back here, and I go to 4,000, and I'm back into that control loop again. And that's the whole thing. So for old time's sake, let's go ahead and run it. So now, to, since this is a, a basic text file, it's actual source text, what I need to be able to do is do call the emulator with a bash bass or for basic, and then go ahead and put that <clears throat> file name in there. And there it is. There's that code. You can see it automatically sort of types that code in there. I will make this bigger. And then you can just run it. And there he is. <laughs> There's the little Pac-Man. And there he goes, eating the text. <laughs> yep. And that's it. That's all there is to it. So uh, I hope that this isn't too scary for you. You know, some folks aren't really into the whole assembly language thing, but this does show that you can do some uh, pretty simple sprite calculations and rendering and even defining the graphics of sprites right within a basic program. It's not easy. I don't like it personally because you can see here, I'm just going to go ahead and eat up all these uh, horrible names that I have to use with just uh, two characters to define them, and two actually two letters specifically, where you can't really even use uh, numerical characters within any of these names. It becomes a a, a real pain in the butt. So, but anyway, if uh, if this is a, a little less intimidating for you, I uh, go ahead and invite you to uh, check out my GitHub. I'm going to be linking that in the description and specifically here to the X16 Sprite, my uh, oldest uh, uh, repo <laughs> that is active on GitHub. And uh, you can go ahead and uh, load all this uh, stuff up. I've got that ghost one too, the ghost.bass and, and a few other things to play with. I, I can't guarantee that anything else works other than sprite.bass and ghost.bass, but that's pretty much where we're at now. But anyway, I want to thank you. If you are a subscriber, thank you so much for getting me to this milestone of 250 uh, after this one year of really radically changing the kind of content that I'm putting on here. And uh, then please go and check out some of my latest videos. I just finished this series of doing Hello World on different 6502 based platforms, uh, all the way from uh, the uh, Atari 2600 through the uh, Commander X16, the next great platform for the 6502. And uh, that's it. If, please, again, like this video, subscribe, click on this little bell, and uh, I'll hope to see you again real soon. And I hope for another good year of uh, growth for the channel and bringing you more awesome retro stuff. Thank you. Bye-bye.